Talk Show. Recorded live. Hey, good evening, everyone. It is uh, Wednesday, July 8th. It's 8 p.m. Eastern, and uh, we're having our regular uh, neomorphosis call. And uh, before we get started, I just want to make sure that everybody on this call, uh, whether you're listening live or you, or you come in and listen to it when it's recorded, uh, understand um, what we're doing here. Um, and so let me tell you by what we're doing, by what we're not doing as well. And what we're not doing is giving legal advice here. So don't ask us. Well, none of us are attorneys. Um, to license. None of us have licenses to practice law, of course. Either do attorneys. Um, but that's neither here nor there. We're not going to give you any legal advice. So again, please don't ask. We're also not going to give you any tax advice. Um, if, you, uh, if, you, if you need legal advice or you need tax advice, uh, you know, go find someone. And uh, I wish you well with that. So, um, you know, what we're going to do here today is we're just going to share ideas and concepts and we're going to provide uh, information uh, and it's to be uh, interpreted as informational, uh, educational, or you can even use it as recreational uh, if, you, if you so desire. So if you hear something on this call uh, and you decide to use it for whatever reason, then take full responsibility for it and, you, and, and use it or do it because that's what you want to do and you understand it, you can enforce it, and you believe unequivocally that it's the right thing for, for you to do. So uh, that having been said, um, I was approached um, – by the way, I hope everybody had a, a great uh, 4th of July weekend. And uh, uh, before I get too further, I, I don't want to forget this one part. Um, I wonder if there's anybody on the call here, and you might think about this between now and next week. What is, uh, what is the Constitution? What is it really? And yeah, uh, the contract between the states well, and well, the uh, federal government? Um, partly, but uh, as some of you know, we've been talking about, and we're going to be moving in a direction here where we're going to be talking a lot about trust. And uh, is it not the ultimate trust on the face of the – well, not on the face of the planet, but one of the, one of the, one of the most interesting trusts uh, – probably one of the more uh, talked about uh, trust on the planet. The question is, who was the grantor? As you know, there's, 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 a, there's a couple different uh, uh, components to any trust. One is you have to have a grantor. You have to have a beneficiary. You have to have a trustee. And one of the things you don't hear all that much talk about is the actual custodian. So um, we are going to be talking about uh, the the different trusts that are out there, the different trusts that you're in, that you you may know you're in, you may not know you're in. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, I can tell you that every parking ticket has a has a trust. Every every criminal case, every civil case uh, has a trust. And uh, one of the one of the reasons that so many people are getting themselves hello. Um, if you, it, it, you know, why they're getting themselves so wrapped around the, the axle is that they don't understand that they're the trustee. And if you don't understand yourself acting as the trustee, you can get yourself in uh, quite a bit of trouble. So, you know, one of the things that people need to understand is you want to make sure as you go about your, 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 your daily lives out there and, you know, moving in amongst people in your commercial affairs, you want to make sure that you're the beneficiary and uh, you're not the trustee. Because the beneficiary gets the benefits and the trustee has to settle and make sure that the trust is properly uh, taken care of. So the, the fact of the matter is, though, in a lot of these trusts, you are the grantor. So the grantor has the, uh, has the ability to uh, uh, either resign themselves as a trustee and or grant themselves the position of beneficiary um, uh, and or vice versa and, and uh, appoint a trustee, and uh, when you do something like that, that can uh, put a uh, that can put a party like oh, let's say a prosecuting attorney or a DA or an attorney or a judge in a very 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 uncomfortable position. So anyway, uh, you know, there's new information coming about coming out about that, and we'll actually have uh, some folks on the call uh, who uh, know quite a bit about this, and we'll be sharing a lot of information. So you want to make sure that you. Uh, you come to the calls or at least uh, go to the archives and listen to those recorded calls when it comes to that. Um, I, uh, I was um, 
I was asked last week uh, to talk a little bit about, um, you know, what's going on with some of the frivolous filings. Apparently, there's quite a few uh, letters that have just recently gone out uh, to people, and there's a variety of them. Some of them are actually being, people are being assessed a $5,000 frivolous filing fee. Um, and some of them are just getting the letter from Maureen Green um, uh, stating that you have 30 days to reposition yourself and fill out a new, um, um, or declare a different status, I should say, uh, with regard to your position on your 1040X. And she, they want you to sign another 1040 and release yourself uh, from that refund. Uh, some other things that are going on, of course, is that the uh, as as many as many of you probably know, if you've studied anything about this OID technology, if you had a two thousand two hundred thousand dollar refund, for example, uh, you do have to pay the IRS the tax, and you do have to pay the state the tax. Well, apparently, what IRS is doing, they may have collapsed the account uh, uh, with the 1099A, and um, uh, what they're doing is the amount of the tax that you're that that would have been deducted from from the refund. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> uh, apparently, IRS is now saying that you owe them that money. Uh, just you know, b b beyond comprehension. So, anyway, um, um, we had received some information about a couple different. Uh, 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 statutes that uh, you can uh, incorporate into any responses uh, that you may may or may not use with, uh, you know, responding to any of these frivolous filings or, or threats or whatever. Uh, you know, some of you, the right thing to do may be to, uh, you know, decline your position and go ahead and sign another 1040X and, um, you know, just stop the whole process. That, that may be what, what is best for you. Again, I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm not here to tell you what not to do. I'm just uh, suggesting that, you know, you just don't want to do anything. You, you need to do something uh, because any time they contact you, um, you know, it is a presentment. And you, uh, the worst thing you can do is, uh, is go quiet on them and not, and not respond. Because by, and, and in my humble opinion, if you don't respond, then you're going to find yourself in dishonor. So um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend you do that. So um, one of the, um, one of the um, uh, titles that you uh, may want to consider, and you can look it up, and we'll also put this on the Yahoo group so you can pull it off that site, um, and some information here would be to, um, um, to read it and understand it so that you may incorporate it into um, um, you know, whatever response you may or may not use. Um, there's also, you know, the idea here about around the uh, uh, FOA response as well, uh, which is, uh, you know, a, um, a way to. Um, you have to excuse me. My my dog's got friends and family and other dogs outside here, and he's whimping out a bit, a bit. So I apologize for that. If you can hear him, hope it's not going to interfere too much here. Um, anyway. Um, uh, if you if you decide to go uh, and file a uh, uh, a FOA uh, request, uh, there's information on the website with regard to, to doing that, which is basically your Freedom of Information Act uh, that uh, falls under 5 U.S.C. 552 and um, the various uh, Internal Revenue Codes, which is uh, uh, 26 U.S.C. 6103 and I think it's 6110. Um, anyway, uh, you may want to consider incorporating these two into, um, <clears throat> excuse me, a FOA request um, as well, or just a just or just a response back to Maureen Green. Uh, and one of them is um, 26 U.S.C. section um, 6751. Now, I, I very rarely have heard people use the term silver bullet, but if you read this closely. This might just be as close to a silver bullet as, as you'll ever find, uh, because what it's going to talk to you about here is a procedural re the requirements. Uh, and A, the computation of penalty included in notice. And it goes on to say that the secretary shall include with each notice of penalty under this title information with respect to the name of the penalty 
the section of this title under which the penalty is imposed and a computation of the penalty. Um, and then under the approval of the assessment in general, no penalty under this title shall be assessed unless the initial determination of such assessment is personally approved in writing by the immediate supervisor of the individual making such determination or such higher level official as the secretary may designate. Now, um, and then there's also uh, Title 26 U.S.C. 6203. And let me say both of those for you again in case you're taking notes. It's 26 U.S.C. 6751 and Title 26 U.S.C. 6203. And 6203 goes on to state, and again, we'll have these. That will be put up on that Yahoo group over there for you, it, which states, upon request of a taxpayer, the secretary shall furnish the taxpayer a copy of the record of assessment. So if you in your FOA demand to see the assessment, guess what? They've got to show it to you. And they can't show it to you. Um, and I'll go on to give you some more information about this. It says, in states that the initial determination must be made and approved in writing before the assessment of any penalty, except for failure to file and pay under Title 26, which obviously none of us or none of you have done. If they cannot produce the determination and approval, then there can not exist an assessment. Um, and so, folks, uh, you know, this short but powerful section, uh, you know, again, may be something you want to use to overcoming uh, any frivolous penalties. Um, and you can, again, you can incorporate that for and ask for the determination under uh, 6751. And by their own laws, uh, it'll defeat them. So, um, and if you couple that with um, code section uh, 7491C, again, that's code section 7491C, and that one states that uh, in a court proceeding, the burden of proof is on the secretary. And uh, so you have a very powerful and effective sim simple knockout punch um, as uh, 6751 is powerful enough um, uh, to give to an agent that would come against you uh, that he or she might want to issue and get your refund to you as soon as possible or drop any notion about uh, a return being frivolous. Um, the courts today have a very uh, interesting um, uh, saying within their system, and um, it's called the bright line test. Again, it's, you know, it's called the bright line, B-R-I-G-H-T-L-I-N-E test. And what it means is um, there is no room for inter interpretation of someone's action. Um, it makes the, uh, the court's job very easy. And, and Section 6751 is a bright line test. So if an IRS agent does not have the discretion, or the IRS agent doesn't have the discretion to make an assessment in the absence of the determination and approval required by this section 6751. So uh, if, if an agent is acting beyond his or her, her authority uh, and they can be sued as a private individual under the Taxpayer Bill of Rights. So, you know, if they think when you, when you, if you play that card on them, they, they've got to know in their training that, uh, um, you know, if you hear this section, you may want to back off because now they can come after you personally. And if you come after them personally, um, then now we're talking about liens, you're talking about um, uh, levies on them and, and everything else. So it could, get, it, could get pretty, uh, it could get pretty ugly on them really fast for someone who's, uh, let's say, a little disturbed about what's going on uh, in the country right now and a little disturbed about uh, what's happening. And uh, they perhaps... Uh, you know, have uh, some desire and passion to make a rogue agent's life a living hell. So uh, this, and what that really means is, is that, mean, that means that the DOJ can't handle the case for them. That means they went out on their own, they crossed the line, and if you cross the line, the DOJ's not going to be able to go, oh, yeah, we'll save you. No, you go out there on your own with your ego 
and uh, you know your arrogance and thinking that you're, you're bulletproof and you know something can't happen to you. Well, guess, guess what? You'd be wrong. Uh, so now the hunter now becomes the hunted. And uh, as my friend Michael James always says, uh, you know that's when they you want them to start reaching for the Malox, the Tums, uh, or the Pepto Bismo, or um, maybe something that even gets things moving a little quicker than that. Um, maybe a little Xlax, I don't know. Um, so you know when it, when when something like this starts to take hold, this is when the fun begins. Uh, now you know that doesn't mean that there, there's not a lot of hard work you know involved in it. Uh, again, it just means that the hunter has now become the hunted. So um, there's um, there's one other thing here that I'll and I'll just read this part to you. It says uh, note a frivolous penalty being theor- theoretically based on a conclusion of law, notwithstanding the obvious fact that no IRS agent is equipped either educationally or by job description with coming to such conclusions, is not one that is calculated through electronic means like the failure to file or failure to pay. Penalties at sections 6651, 6654, and 6655. Again, 6651, 6654, and 6655, all of which are simply percentages of other established figures. And this, and thus, simple math calculations. So that's some, uh, that's some pretty good stuff. Um, you know, with with uh, with any of the frivolous filings, you know, um, there's uh, there's been some different methods that I've heard uh, that uh, uh, apparently are working, and some are, and some aren't. Uh, I don't know. I know that some money orders and and doing the accepted for value and sending it back to Treasury in D.C. and you write things out. I've read about and uh, heard from different parties, uh, you know, several things that seem to be working. Um, I don't know. Um, you know, uh, I, I just I can only go on what people talk to me about, share with me, tell me about. Um, um, I haven't I haven't uh, uh, done any of the money order uh, kind of stuff. So, um, you know, again, here one of the things you want to do immediately, I would think, is you want to get you know uh, your Freedom of Information Act request uh, out there. And, and get get that into the process and mention this and say, okay, <clears throat> you say I have a frivolous filing, you say I owe you <coughs> frivolous money, well then I, we're going to use the Freedom of Information Act request to demand that you show me the paperwork and send it to me. And then if they don't, then you, you have them in dishonor and you can put it into the public record. And once it's into the public record, if you wanted to, I guess you could, uh, you know, if it was me, um, that's what I'd be doing. Um, and you know, I'd be setting up, uh, I'd be setting myself up with all the necessary paperwork so that <clears throat> if I had to go defend myself, it would be uh, pretty. <clears throat> excuse me, it would be uh, pretty easy to do. And again, I can only share information with you guys what I might do if it was me. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the rest of this is is some of it is uh, um, you know kind of learning learning on on the fly. Um, I do know that I believe uh, Tim Strand's uh, uh, response to some of this uh, frivolous filing stuff is also on that Yahoo group that you are, you know, it's all freely given and freely received. So it's up there on that on the Yahoo group. And uh, as I remember, it's um, and Matthew uh, chime in here if I'm incorrect, but it's uh, free Americans. That's plural. Uh. The, yeah, the free Americans. The free Americans. Thank you. The yep. free Go Americans. Groups. Go to groups.yahoo.com, and then in the search bar, type in the free Americans. And the uh, packet that uh, Dave's talking about is the IRS master response file. There's two parts, part one and part two. It's under forms. Okay. So there you have it. Uh, what we uh, what we discussed tonight, sorry, guys, for me being such a schmacklehead about knowing that, but I that's, that's what I rely on, um, Matthew and Tim and some others to help us with this. Um, which brings me to you know the point that you guys hear me talk about a lot on this call, and that is, don't go out there by yourself. Um, you know, um, find some teammates, find some other people who are interested, and because uh, they're all around you. Um, you know, I would I would bet that any 
I would bet any amount of money. Well, there is no money, but I would bet if I had silver and gold, I, I would bet a stack of them on the fact that uh, um, you have um, people living within a mile of you who are, are totally getting trashed and they need help, they need support, they need love, they need prayer, they need all kinds of things. Many of you are, are sitting here on a wealth of knowledge, and I'm, and I'm just as guilty of this. I have all this, mo- all this knowledge and I have all this technology, and, um, you know, faith without works is dead, so what am I doing with it? Uh, it's just information if it's sitting in, inside my head. So, you know, there are a, there are a lot of people out there that chose to um, go down the OID road and and file their original issue discounts. And every single one of you that did that did it legally and lawfully. Isn't that interesting? So, you know, what what it's really about learning is to is to make sure that we're 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 we're, we're standing in honor and we're doing what's right. And uh because the only thing these guys can do um is continue to do what? I mean, how are they gonna how are they gonna defend their own system and their own uh, idea behind what's going on. Uh, I was talking to a, to one of my best friends today, and he was telling me about a, a family in and you know I won't say where. I'll just tell you they're uh, they're in the they're in, they're in another state than where I live, and um, they uh, they did I believe their 2008 uh, OID, and uh, I'm not sure whether they got a check or they got an electronic transfer. But three days later, here come three rogue agents out of Atlanta after them. Now, wait a minute. Let's make sure I understand this right. And by the way, I've heard this in several arenas on several other fronts where, you know, IRS sends them a a refund, and three days later, these guys are kicking down the doors. Well, wait a minute. So they totally knew what they were doing. They're setting them up, they're baiting them, and they're giving them the money, and then they're turning around and, you know, they're, they're filing liens, they're filing levies, they're, they're uh, zero balancing their checking accounts, they're threatening the banks where they do business. I mean, you know, they're doing everything they can to destroy these people's lives. Now, I can tell you that this one family, the woman is about, I don't know, she's probably very, very close. She's in her final trimester and she's very close to to delivering and having a baby and here and and they've and they've uh they've um they're taking the wages of the husband i think they i think they, he told me that they're 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 taking um forty percent of the the net paycheck so um you know it, it's pretty ugly on them right now there is good news and part of it and that is the people got the money away in time, and uh, uh, IRS wasn't able to get their hands on the money. But, uh, you know, now they're going to go out here and, and see what they can do about making these people's lives a living hell. So with, you know, IRS out there now uh, attacking literally tens of maybe not hundreds of thousands of people, uh, and now there's, you know, millions and millions of people now that are starting that know the truth, I think it's pretty evident that there's a lot of people out here in America today that said, you know, enough's enough. We've had enough. And, um, you know, they bought the guns and the ammunition to prove it. So, you know, I, I, you know, is it going to come down to rogue agents uh, and military and sheriffs and everybody else that are going to turn on their fellow brothers and sisters in this country and, and start shooting them? Uh, because I can tell you that the, the vibration between law enforcement right now is um, <clears throat> many of them are now facing what they're being told and talked about, about martial law and, and all these other crazy things, and uh, they've got to make a decision. Um, first of all, if you're, if you're a sheriff or an FBI We lose you, Dave. Pardon me. Thought we lost you there. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, what's the last thing? You, what was the last thing you heard me say? Um, I don't know. 
Well, there you have it. I'm saying I just that. I you stop talking. Okay. <laughs> well, what I was. He said if you're a FBI or sheriff. Right. So if you're FBI, uh, sheriff, uh, you know, whatever, uh, whatever capacity law enforcement that you're in, the question is, what are you going to do? Are you going to walk away from your family and leave them exposed? Um, are you going to pull the trigger on your neighbor down the street uh, and, and doing it knowing, knowing that you're doing it because of the Rothschild banking cartel and the IMF and the Illuminati and, and these evil men and women who want to, I mean, you know, let's face it, they want to kill billions of people. That's what they want to do. They want to eliminate. And that's, you know, it, you, you can go to the Internet, man. You can, you can read up on this stuff. It's, um, it's right there. And, you know, that's, 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 uh, that's beyond um, frightening. It's, uh, it's downright Steve? insane. Yes. Can I ask this? Is Steve, how are you? Hey, Steve. Good day. I was, I was uh, away at a festival for two weeks. So can I ask you, if they kill all these billions of people, then who's going to do all the work? One of the one of the one of the other people said, "Yeah, so who's going to pick the lettuce?" Um, and that's a really good point. Um, you know, so you know, who knows? I I don't know, but here's what I do know: they're up to no good, they're up to evil, uh, and I do know that they are they do want to do away with some of the people, many of the people on the planet, and of course they're doing that with starvation. Uh, you know, how many children are dying every day of starvation? Um, um, you know, um, Pastor. Uh, Rod Parsley, uh, uh, I just got an email from him, and he's, talk, he's normally uh, asking for contributions, and he goes abroad. He goes to uh, Africa, and he, he goes all around the world feeding um, um, hungry people, and you know, he does a lot of things. He goes in and shows them farming, and he digs wells, and uh, you know, he does a, a variety of things. But it's interesting because now uh, in his uh, latest email, to me, he's talking about, uh, and I've never seen him talk about this. And by the way, if you've never seen um, uh, Pastor uh, Rod uh, Parsley's uh, talk uh, about the Federal Reserve, uh, it's absolutely phenomenal. And I would, I would encourage you to go do a Google. It's about a 45-minute presentation that he does uh, a sermon uh, on the Federal Reserve and our money and our monetary system to his congregation in Ohio. And uh, it really, really is fabulous. And so, um, um, you know, again, I've never, I've never seen uh, an email from him where he's actually asking uh, for contributions to help people uh, in the United States. But this one I got today, he, he is actually doing that because he's talking about, and I'm just going to go here and open up the... Uh, the, uh, the email real quick so I can share just a, a, a bit of it with you. Um, my, and my question is, Dave, is why he didn't support Ron Paul then, if he was so... That's, that's an interesting thing. Um, I, be very careful of all those, those uh, people on the pulpit that are talking about politics. Uh, what I would encourage you to do, go watch his sermon and make your come to your own conclusion, because I'll tell you what he is. He is. He is the, the 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 call it what you want. Talk presentation sermon whatever it is. Uh, he's talking about the Federal Reserve and he's talking about money and he's talking about usury and and I, and I and I and I think he does a beautiful job of bringing the usury uh, to the table on on what's going on. And anyway, you know, he's talking today uh, in this email about people, families living in Chicago and Miami and uh, Coachella Desert in, area in California, which is where all the people, you know, that a lot of some of the people that have been foreclosed upon in California are, uh, are you know, are now are, are now living, um, you know, in, in those in those communities. Um, so. Um, OK, well, I'm getting other information here. Um, hmm. Well, well, I have I have friends who um, I don't I don't know anything about the man other than uh, you know I watched the one sermon that he did and um, uh, I thought it was um, you know I thought it was pretty powerful. Um, I've been I've um, 
you know the vi the video again that I saw was was I, I thought it was I thought it was really good, um, but I'm being told here that uh, apparently there's other information about him. So I'm not I'm not suggesting that you join his congregation or his or you know his church or give him money or or any of those kinds of things. I'm just I I will just say that I found it interesting that he's now uh, asking for money for people in the United States rather than in other parts of the world. And you know Stephen makes a really good point and I and I and I and I agree with him 100 percent and that is that there are many um, many standing on the pulpit today uh, and in my humble opinion one of the main reasons that America is where it is today in some regards has a lot to do with the church and the 5013s and the fact that many churches are impotent today and they don't teach the truth so um, I came on late. Would you please uh, state the name of this person, the the pastor, and can we read it online? Uh, you can. It's Pastor Rod Parsley. Parson? Parsley. P A R S L E Y. I believe it's how it's spelled. That's, okay. That's right. And his that was a great <clears throat> that was a great uh, message he shared about. It. But I'm saying he 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 didn't follow it up. He 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 got through it. Told everybody about it and then like walked away from it. Yeah, um, I was, I was. That's uh, what I'm saying. Right. Yeah, and and that's interesting because it, you know when you, it, most of us, many of us on this call, I don't know all, but many of us could go listen to his uh, his talk, uh, sermon, whatever you want to call it, and we at the end would go, well, that was really great, and uh, you know one of my best friends I was just talking about here, he said the same thing. He goes, yeah, it was a great sermon, but guess what? He's still clueless. He doesn't get it. He's not there. He's not pointing a finger at the cartel. He's not pointing a finger at the IMF. He's saying, yeah, this is what, th here's what happens, and here's what goes on, but he's, you're right, he didn't, he didn't say anything about, um, you know, where it all came from, and, and uh, uh, you know, so anyway, um, of course, then again, if he does, uh, and, if, and if he does mention any of those kinds of things, uh, then, Guess what card the the government plays? They uh, they come in and remove his 5013C, and uh, guess what happens? Um, next thing you know, uh, now he can't operate as a church. So, well, he could operate as a church. He just doesn't get the the tax breaks, and we all know about that anyhow. So it's yeah, they dangle the carrot. Right. With the tax break, but if if uh, check out hushmoney.com. Hushmoney.com. There's a guy who teaches churches how to get out of 501c3. So hushmoney.com or hushmoney.org. Thanks, Steve. That's good information. I'm gonna look that up. Yeah, um, it, it definitely is. So you know, anyway, um, that's um, basically um, what I wanted to. Uh, what we had uh, found here uh, last week, and we wanted to share this, uh, the 26 USC 6751. Uh, go out there and Google it, uh, read it, and uh, you know, make it your own. You also want to do Title 26 USC 6203. And uh, again, you can incorporate those into your paperwork if it, if it resonates with you and you understand it. And you own it, and can um, properly put it into its correct contents when it comes to your your paperwork. Again, I'm not telling you to do it. I'm not telling you not to do it. But here's what I can tell you: If it was me, I'd be all over it. Uh, I can tell you that. So um, that's my story, and I'm sticking with it. So um, what we're again uh, just to kind of plant a seed, a couple of things. Um, we're looking into a couple of things for our group because this group is growing uh, immensely. We're getting a uh, getting a, getting a lot of folks uh, coming here, and uh, we're real happy about that. Um, and, but at the same time, we want to make sure that we're providing great content and good information. And uh, um, I, I guess some of you, uh, I was, uh, I you know, I went out of town this last weekend, and I was uh, gone from Thursday, came back uh, yesterday. And I did not take my computer with me. And um, you know what? I got to tell you, it was great to be away from the computer. It was great to be away. And I just totally detached. 
and I made an absolute commitment to myself and my family, and that was live one day at a time. Live one second at a time. Stay out of tomorrow and stay out of yesterday and just enjoy your family. My son had gone out of town with his best friend's mom down to see some family, and so it was just uh, my wife and my daughter and I, and uh, we met up with a couple people, and we just had an absolute blast. So I did not listen to, um, and I haven't listened to the archive yet either, about um, uh, Dr. Sam Kennedy, the fiction, uh, and his um, uh, parent uh, position with fictional Pastor Tony King, or Fisher, or Fisher King, or King Fisher. Um, whatever, whoever he is and whatever both of those guys are calling themselves these days. Uh, here's, my, here's my view on both of them. Um, Kennedy has certainly put out some very, very inf- some inf- interesting information. But it's my understanding that his name is not Sam Kennedy. So whether it's, uh, you know, his last name is Unger or Berkowitz or whatever it is, you know, is he coming to the table as a fiction because he doesn't want, you know, the feds after him? Well, we all kind of know that if the feds want you, guess what? They're going to they're gonna come grab you. Uh, and certainly, you know, Sam has raised enough hell out there uh, that, you know, that if they were going to silence him, I, it would seem to me that they would have they would have come and hauled him away by now. So I'm not going to, and the the only reason I say that is that if he's using the excuse as a fiction, you know, why? Uh, um, Again, um, you know, and if if he wants to stay free and clear, then that's still not the way he's doing it because he has events. He announces them and he's had lots of events and they could have showed up and drug him out the front door if they really wanted to do that. Um, cause I don't think at the end of the day, if they, if they wanted to come get any of the, the so-called gurus out there and Kennedy or Winston Shroud or Turner or Hines or Clarence or any, you know, any of these men and or women who go out here and, and, you know, put on seminars and so on, I think they could probably come get them anytime they wanted. Uh, so the question is, why does he portray himself in the fictional character? Now, Tony King on the other I mean, his name was Tony Fisher, and then he changed it to King. Then it was Pastor. I mean, you know, so that's that's an all caps fiction. So you know, what what's up with that? So Kennedy's now saying that 90% of the information that he's putting out there about the uh, you know the the DTC is is uh, correct, and you know, um, you know, at the end of the day, come on, we we got to use sensory acuity here. Um, you know, uh, I read a book long, many, few years ago. It was a great book. It was called What the Blink. And we can make a determination within the blink of an eye. And we know as long as we keep, you know, we keep ourselves centered on what's right and what's wrong. And so, you know, something didn't resonate with me about Pastor King, you know, from the very get-go. Uh, Larry Williams, something didn't resonate with me. Uh, his assistant, Nana, the, that whole process. And uh, they were defending, defending, defending. So, you know, I have, I have firsthand information from people that I know and love and trust immensely, would trust with my family's life, who were in Ohio, who spent time with this guy, Pastor King. And he didn't have two nickels to rub together just a few months ago. So if he's tapped into the DTC, what's up with that? Why is he living in poverty? Um, um, and why is he charging absorbent amounts of money? I mean, obviously, he can do his seminars. He can charge what he wants. But as a pastor, I don't know that that's, uh, you know, on the right line of paying it forward. So, you know, um, you know, uh, I, I don't know. And, and then, you know, we have, we have uh, some, of these, some of these other uh, 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 people out here that are saying that, you know, Tim Turner – and his assistant are federal agents. Well, look, I'm not 100%. I don't have 100% on anything. But I'm 99.99% sure that that is absolute, total, 100% BS. Um, and, and, and again, I, I have some people that have spent quite a bit of time in Tim's camp. And, uh, you know, we also have 
uh, some first-hand information that his technology is working. And there's also, uh, you know, some information that I have recently come into that, you know, there's been a couple assassination attempts. So, you know, I, I, I don't know. Here's what I do know. I don't, you can't fix the problem with the same consciousness that caused it, uh, to use the same consciousness to fix it. It's not going to work. And that's why, you know, I love um, the, uh, the monkey story, the 100 monkeys. Some of you have heard me tell it, and uh, I'll tell it, you know, at another time. But um, we're coming around to three quarters of the hour here, and uh, I don't want to uh, uh, be too long on this call tonight. So um, what I'd like to do is um, open up the call, and we'll take a couple questions. What I'd like to do, if you could, is keep your questions uh, as they relate to the subject matter that we talked about uh, this evening. So uh, what you want to do, and uh, Matthew will be working with us here on that, and if you, if you have a question, hit star 8 on your, call, on your phone there, and that'll, uh, that'll let uh, Matthew know that you have a question. And if you're going to ask a question tonight, do us a favor, ask it, hey, if it was you, what would you do if? So uh, that way, again, so we're all crystal clear that we're not giving legal advice here. We don't give legal advice or tax advice here. Uh, again, just preface your question, uh, you know, if it was you, what would you do if this happened? So um, it looks like we already have uh, a couple of callers with questions. So we'll go ahead and open it up. Uh, go ahead, Matthew, and let me know what we got. Okay, Dave, our first caller is Kevin from Nebraska. Kevin, you have been unmuted. Hey, hey Dave. Kevin. Kevin in Nebraska. I have a little different twist on the frivolous filing. I've received one of those and responded, and then they've written back and said, give us another three weeks, so apparently they don't know what to do. But I've also received we, a rather you, interesting... Yeah, that was funny. You, before, before you go any further, Kevin, can you back up, and can you share with the listeners what, what, what was the... You know, you don't have to go over all of it, but what was the, uh, what was the gist of your letter and your response to them? Um, how about we cover this next subject and I'll look it up and then I'll come back on and I'll tell you exactly what I did. Okay, fair enough. Go ahead. Um, I got a letter from the IRS pertaining to a specific tax year, 2006, where I filed an OID 1040 and... A 1040 or 1040X? A 1040. It was an original filing. It was late. They uh, acknowledged receipt of the 1040, months later, they send me a letter dated June 1 that says, we have determined there's a deficiency in your income tax as shown. And what they did was totally disregard the 1040 filing that I put in, and they filed their own. Okay. Um, if you go to the Yahoo um, location that we spoke of, the, the Free Americans, um, you'll see that there's a, uh, as Matthew uh, said, uh, what's, uh, there's, there's two files there, and if you read through there, Kevin, uh, there's some, um, there's answers to that deficiency. Okay. And I'll, That's meanwhile, up. I'll look, uh, I'll look up what I sent them, and I'll come back on. Okay, great. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for thanks for uh, coming on. Uh, got someone else, Matthew? Yeah, Dave. The next one is uh, the user ID is Blackwater Frog. Uh, go ahead. You've been unmuted. Yeah. Hey, uh, my name's Kenny. I'm in California. Hey, Kenny. I just, you there, I just wanted you to repeat. You were talking about some USC code sections earlier. Would you repeat those real quick? Um, yeah, and there'll be. Um, you have uh, 26 USC 6751. And, okay. 26, and 26 USC 6203 and 7491C. Uh, 7491 is also 26? Yes, yeah. I, believe, I believe so, yes. Yes, USC yes, it 26, is. 267491. Okay, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh -huh. Thanks for coming and uh, for listening tonight. Uh -huh. Who else you got, Matthew? Uh, that's all I have for now. I had wow. a couple of callers that had uh, 
requested questions. I don't know if they got dropped off. Oh, Kevin's back. Let me uh, bring him back on here. Yeah. Hey, Kevin, you're back. I haven't found that info yet. I haven't found that info yet, but um, I have a question about the Title 26. My understanding of law is that Title 26 is I'm trying to think of the term. Maybe you can help me with this, Dave. It's um, like an unsubstantiated law or it's not a true law. And if we plead or use that title, then we are giving jurisdiction to their process or to their system. Like Title 15 is, is considered a true law or a real law. Title 15 is, is pertains to debt collectors, and it's looked at. Are you, are you familiar with what I'm trying to talk about here? Or yeah, you're saying, yes, Title 15 uh, is Fair Debt Collection Practices um, yes. Act. And Title 26, yes, um, you know, I have, uh, I have heard people state that uh, that's their IRS law as they wrote it. Um, you know, I'm trying to think of the the real legal term, Dave. I'm not coming up with it right at the moment, but it's various titles are half of them are like fictitious law, like like Title 26 is it pertains well, the, to sections and codes and stuff like that. Well, you know, obviously they're operating under the color of law anyway, because there's only one ultimate authority, and and so uh, in my in my in my view of things. So everything else, uh, you know, all their codes and all their statutes and federal rules of procedure and, and you know, everything on down the line is all man's stuff. Well, you know, they, they have created uh, this, this mess. Uh, they, they are the ones that bankrupt the country. They're the ones that took the gold. They're the ones that took the silver. There is no legal money uh, uh, in, in existence today, and, you know, it is their responsibility based on law and House Joint Resolution 192 and the laws that back that up escape me at the moment, uh, but they're there. Um, and um, I know uh, if, if Tina's on the call, she, she can spit them out uh, I'm very muted. easily. Can you hear me? Am I unmuted? Oh, great. So, uh, oh, I sure are, unmuted. Tina. All right. Uh, so what, what's the public, what's the what's, public what's law the law 7310, public law 7310, or I prefer to refer to it as Chapter 48, 48.112, and the stat is the, the congressional statutes at large. Um, HR 192 refers to a resolution, which you know can be changed, just like our New Year's resolutions. But but when you refer to it as the actual congressional laws, it has a little more validity to it. Um, yes, and I have something to add to that. But here's Dave, you know where we've been and what we're doing and you know, Title twenty six applies to trustees. Exactly. You asked at the beginning, what is what is the constitution? Constitutor means to transfer the debt onto a third party and when they did the constitution, you know, some people say that it hasn't been ratified, it's not in effect. It's in effect, but not in a way that they taught us it was in effect. It's the ultimate trust agreement of the land which transferred the liability of the debt onto us, the people, as trustees, and the crown became the beneficiary. Well, everything flows on down that way. We, we became the trustees, and as a part of a trust agreement, Title 26 does apply to you in that capacity. But the good news is you can change it. Stay tuned later for more. Yeah. Um, and we are obviously very excited about uh, the very, very hard and intense work that is going on behind the scenes of this group. And um, uh, we're going to share that information uh, possibly in a different format than what we are currently using. So the, the, we're still, we're still uh, discussing that and studying that and deciding how that's going to be simulated. Um, so the bottom line is... Um, Within 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 the within within uh, 26 USC, uh, yes, it, it's, she very she said it very very well as the uh, the assignment of as the trustee. Uh, here's an interesting question: How many of us saw Bernanke and Paulson 
get up before Congress and put $700 billion into the system and, and, and gave the bill to the taxpayers. How many of you declined their offer of contract? Well, I suspect that most of us did. And uh, yet they got, they got right up there in front of everybody. And guess what? If you, don't, if you don't decline their offer, then guess what? They assume that you're okay with that 36000 or what is it, $38,000 that every man, woman, and child in America today, excluding the aliens, uh, now owe the federal government. So maybe that's something we'll talk about on another call, what, what you might want to do uh, about that. So um, anyway... Um, that's the name of that tune. Um, Matthew, do you have anybody else that has any questions? Yeah, Steve Z uh, wants to jump in. Well, good. We want Steve Z to jump in. Go ahead, Steve. Steve, go ahead. I just was wondering if they, if anybody knows anyone down in St. Petersburg that was a notary. Does, does somebody know anybody in St. Petersburg that's a notary? Is that your question? Mm -hmm. um, I do not. Michael B. might know. Yeah, but I, where, where is he? <laughs> I haven't talked to him. I, I, I got his can, number, but... I can um, I can put that question out there to him if you'd like me to do that. Are you yeah, still... can you do that for me? Because I, I've tried to get a hold of him, and he's kind of disappeared, as you know. So. Well, he's, uh, he's, you know, he's doing some things, and uh, he's spending some time with his family, and so... Well, that's, and that's important. Yeah. So he's doing what he what he needs to do, and I totally respect and appreciate that very much. Well, and I do too. So, all right, all right. yeah, that was it. Okay. I, I, there's some fr a friend of mine down there that need a notary, so that's what I'm checking. Okay. I can help him out if you don't care what state it's from. No, they need they need the actual witness. So. Oh, I got witness, you. and then and then a, you know to mail the paperwork. So. Yep. Yep. All righty. Uh, any other questions tonight? Uh, yeah, actually, um, Kevin is back. Kevin, you're unmuted. Go ahead. Hey, I found that letter. It's a okay. it's a pretty simple letter. Um, one one philosophy I've always used is mirroring what they do. So if they say, "Dear taxpayer," I put something back like, "Dear government employee." <laughs> And we all understand they're not, but if they don't rebut it, they're admitting that they are. So, dear government employee, consider my timely and good faith response to your form letter, 3176SC revised 7-2007 catalog number 26860K, dated April 27th, 09, from the above person so stated, who is Miss Green. It's not my intent, nor has it ever been, to reflect any desire to delay or impede the administration of federal tax laws. Further, it's not now, nor has it ever been my intent to file anything that's considered frivolous under Section 6702C, nor the Notice 2007-30-2007-14 IRB-883 at the government website that was uh, uh, mentioned in their letter to me. Can you help me in being more specific with this site? As, it lo as I have looked at the site and cannot figure out what I may be in breach of, of any information found on the site. So can you be more specific and quote the verbiage for me in order for me to refile if that is what I need to do? Can you identify what specifically the following statement is referring to? Quoted from your letter, federal courts, including the Supreme Court of the United States, have considered and repeatedly rejected as without merit positions such as yours. What specifically is there in the 2007-1040 that warrants such a letter from your department? If there is a problem, I'll gladly submit corrections. Can you identify them specifically so that we can take care of this? Can you identify what publication 2105 has to do with the 2007-1040 in question? As I have read through it, and I do not see anything that comes into conflict with the 1040 in question. If I did not hear from you within 30 days from the date of this letter, I'll consider this matter closed and that the letter you sent to me was sent in error. Upon another examination of the 07 filing of the 1040 for the above reference Social Security number, 
Can you show me specifically what is wrong with the return as I do not find one? Sincerely signed on the right side as authorized representative, attached copy of their letter. That's what I sent to them. Okay, and, and just so to clarify my thinking, did you draft that yourself or did you take bits and pieces from, from this and that or what, what could you share with us about that? Oh, I pretty much drafted it myself. I may have read things and, you know, thought about it, but typically I do not copy and paste. I, I look at something and rewrite in my own language, if you will, um, just because I want it personalized and I want to understand what I'm writing. And I have enough confidence, Dave, to do that. So, Right. Understood. Okay. Good. Well, I, I liked it. You know, it, was, uh, it had a nice flow to it. Um, obviously, it uh, had good vibrational um, merit to it. And uh, so, you know, it sounded really good. I liked it. And I did uh, send it certified mail, too. And did you so, do it under did you do it under notary seal? I didn't, but they did respond, so they obviously received it. Um, I'm actually thinking about and they, re, and they responded saying we need three weeks to uh, Yeah, they actually responded that says uh please accept our apology for not being able to review your response dated three oh five and this is dated seven let's see here. July 6th, please give us to 720. You don't need to respond. However, if you have any questions, blah, 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 you can call us and talk to one of our idiots at the home office, you know. So um, that's what they sent. And I'm actually thinking about replying and saying, you've had your 30 days. Thank you for your um, acceptance of my letter and acknowledgement of such. You had 30 days. You failed to respond. I'm looking for my uh, 1040 to be processed, including my refund. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Right on. So that's what my thought is. I mean, they don't give us extra time typically, so if they answer late, that's their problem, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, you gave them 30 days. Um, that's, um, I think that's a pretty uh, gracious uh, uh, amount of time. Uh, 30 days, come on. Uh, if they can't get to it in 30 days, then, you know, w w what are they, they going to do? I mean, come on. You think they're going give to you, give you that long? No. No. <laughs> I wouldn't think so either, brother. So, you know. You know so I have a question. When, when one is responding to this stuff, do you think it's necessary if it's all coming from Miss Green's office to separate your responses through a notary, or do you think one could just put four or five, six letters into a single correspondence and just have the notary say that enclosed is, you know, five correspondence all pertaining to these years and blah blah blah? If you can't, of course, you can always do it under notary seal. I don't think that's ever a bad decision, my humble opinion, if it was me. But you can also do the certificate of service through your post office, which means that you can use the affidavit certificate of service, uh, which uh, basically says that you're sending such and such a document, document one, document two, document three. It was all put into the envelope, and then your postmaster will stamp it with their stamp and certify that the information that you said that you were sending to whatever party has been inspected by the postmaster. And you know what? They won't screw around with the, with the UPU. Uh, so when a postmaster puts a stamp on a certificate of service, which is an affidavit form, um, you know, and what you do is you make a, it's a certificate of service, it's an affidavit, a certificate of service, and you get two originals. Uh, if it was me, you sign it in blue ink, you put your thumbprint in red, and you put a two-cent postage stamp down in the lower right-hand corner of it along uh, with two-cent postage stamps on your documents. I would put two-cent postage stamps on the right rear bottom, I'm sorry, right on the front, right corner at the bottom, and then I'd also do, the, uh, do it on the back of every document, and I'd sign across it diagonally on every document. 
And uh, that's it. What else I would do, Dave? Sure. Hey, wait, 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 wait. You said you were not going to talk tonight. That's what you said. <laughs> so that money, and you were going to do something to me about taking my, my, my wage and all that. So anyway, go, go ahead, liar, liar. But what I would do if it were me, I would also thank them for their letter that constitutes mail fraud. A reason why I say that, because every letter that I get, I immediately take it down to the post office, take it out of the envelope in front of them, and have them stamp it. Why? Because if you ever look at the date on your, well, whenever I look at my date on a correspondence that they sent to the taxpayer, it's three days. For instance, I got it today, but the letter was dated, oh, let's say July the 11th. When it's the eighth, but you dated the letter four days out in advance from when you mailed it, but yet you say you mailed it on that day. Um, that's a that's a great distinction because I will tell you, uh, I I had read a letter from um, uh, Maureen Green, which I suspect there is no such thing as Maureen Green. I believe she's probably a computer. Um, a computer generated name of some kind, but you know, I'm not hundred percent sure that's just my hallucination. And, uh, anyway, I saw this letter and, uh, it was dated. The letter was dated. Well, I'll just say it was like the first, um, and, and, and they didn't even, they didn't even mail it, you know, for like two weeks later. Um, I also found that uh, different court systems do this exact same thing. Uh, they dated on such and such a date and then they mail it. And then they give you, you know, you have 10 days to respond. And the next thing you know, you get it three days before um, um, you know, you had time to um, to respond to it. So, you know, again, just, just trickery and nonsense. Um, here's somebody that's uh, emailing me said the, the letter was received July 7th. The date was June 24th. So that's typical. That's you know that's how that's how people of dishonor work. Uh, anyway, I was going to share with you uh, very quickly before we have to get off the call tonight um, was another uh, letter that was a similar, somewhat similar to what uh, <clears throat> Kevin just shared with us. And uh, so this is a uh, this is to you know to, to Maureen at the Department of Treasury in Ogden, and it's from um, you know John Doe, and uh, it has the date of the letter and so on in response to the actual letter itself. All these different letters, like a lot of these people that are getting the letters, you'll notice in the top right-hand corner, it's a 3176C. Again, that's, it'll say LTR 3176C. And this one just says, Dear, uh, dear Computer Green, um, please find my response to your letter dated such and such for my uh, 07 amended 1040 return, whereby you give me 30 days to respond to your letter. Uh, Maureen, I find your letter very disturbing. Uh, I am sure you're not demanding that I commit a crime, are you? I bring attention to Section 6751, which was just recently uh, added, I believe, to this, and uh, to Title 26-6203. You are hereby notified to furnish me of the assessment. Um, Then it goes on to say that, uh, Maureen, you can easily resolve this issue by checking the QCIT number assigned to uh, whatever the creditor's name is against the 1099 OID filing in question and research it against IRS's TTNL tracking system to confirm the unearned income that was drawn against the credit account, social security number of the person, and the interest that was earned. Uh, I, I am not duty bound. I, I, am I not duty bound to report this unearned income to the IRS? I'm sure this is a mere oversight and will be quickly resolved when you check your TTL tracking system. I respectfully remind you, Maureen, uh, of your fiduciary responsibilities in this matter. Because of the seriousness of your Dan, I will need uh, you to fill out the enclosed public servant questionnaire that you were required to do under federal and state laws when requested to do so as Exhibit A. You are required to forward this information to me in accordance with standard procedure by government agents and officials, see Internal uh, Revenue Manual, 
Section uh, 242.133, and other authorities for various questions on a questionnaire, just to ensure me that you are acting honorably and will expedite my refund as soon as possible. You have 30 days to return the questionnaire, though I will be mailing this response on the date it was created in an honorable fashion. So obviously this person uh, had received uh, you know, the letter dated blah, and it was uh, not received until whatever, and then they want you to respond within 30 days literally only giving you 15 days or 10 days, however they, <clears throat> however it's dated. For your convenience, I've enclosed copies of Schedule B of the 1040X for that particular year, amended return along with copy B of the 1099A and copy C of the 1099 OID. As confirmation of the corrected filings, Annex is Exhibit C. It is quite obvious that your real issue is with uh, so-and-so bank for failing to report the income and the interest income. Per the Internal Revenue Service Publication 1212, I, I am to file my 1099 OIDs and 1099As and 1099 INTs if not filed properly by the commercial banking system at all. The banking system is holding my withholding and should have already been extracted or should be extracted by the Internal Revenue Service by way of the 1099A filing. I have deposited my funds with the banking system in good faith, which would pay the proper share of tax due the required by that institution. Michael White at the Federal Register has gone on record making it clear that the IRS must abide by 26 CFR. The 1040 return settlement form presented was done correctly and the amount reported on the form was also reported correctly in accordance with 26 USC section 1271 through 1275 per publication 1212 by the IRS. By the way, any of you out there who are doing OIDs, if you don't have a copy of the publication 1212 and you haven't read it, then you're making a mistake by filing and not knowing what you're doing. I am following the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, stare the ceases, the mandates of various legislation such as the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act and Treasury Directives. The IRS has stated in the publication 1212 that the purpose of the 1099 OID is to alert the IRS where the interest is to be sent so you can close out the physical year by sending the interest tax back in the calendar year to the creator of the debt credit. The IRS is to collect and return value of the note cash item back to the principal. Publication 1212 under showing the IID adjustment states it should be listed on Schedule B. That is exactly where it's been placed per those instructions. Furthermore, Congress cannot grant any power to the IRS except as is granted to Congress by the Constitution. This is clearly understood and expressed by the Secretary of Treasury in 26 CFR 601-106 Rule 1. Uh, by the way, uh, we'll post this on uh, the uh, Yahoo group if, for those who would like to uh, take a look at this. Um, and, and it goes on to say, it talks about some other things in the, you know, with the government and appeals and so on and so forth. Um, and then it just basically kind of signs it off. I am fully in accord with the laws that make it clear everything must be done decently and in order. Also take note that the U.S. Supreme Court has placed clearly defined restrictions on your actions. In Watson versus Tarpley, 59 U.S., it goes, you know, tells the year and all that. If you fail to abide by the rulings of this high court stare diseases, as well as your own codes and implementing regulations, this matter will be presented to the Inspector General for Tax Administration and member of the Treasury Data Integrity Board. <laughs> Notice, notice the principles, notice the agent. Notice the agent is notice the principal. <clears throat> so, um, there you have it. Um, uh, so, let's go ahead and, Matthew, if you would, if you'd uh, so kindly share with the group before we sign off here tonight with, and uh, sign off with a prayer that um, uh, the uh, how to go to the Yahoo group and get any of the uh, documents and stuff that we've mentioned on the calls over the last couple of months. Sure will, Dave. Uh, you want to go to groups, G-R-O-U-P-S dot Yahoo dot com. There's a search box on the screen. You're going to type in the free Americans, and that's plural, and it will come up. You can go ahead and click on it, follow the links to join the group. And once you have joined the group, you will have access. On the left side, you'll see several uh, links. One of those links is files. Um, there's posts, 
uh, a lot of good information out there. Under files, you will see a lot of these uh, uh, documents that we've talked about tonight. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Matthew. And uh, don't forget, uh, you know, just uh, to join the group, uh, you send us a thousand bucks, and you can download all those documents. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Obviously, it's freely given. It's free to receive. And finally, to close out tonight, uh, here in the next couple of weeks, we're doing some research on a on a way that uh, maybe some of us uh, can earn a little extra income. Uh, at first glance, uh, what we're looking at it right now, it uh, we like what we see. Uh, we really like what we see, but we're you know we're not ready to uh, put it out there to uh, anyone yet until we have um, you know 100% confirmation that you can earn uh, what we are being told uh, someone can earn and that, you know, the investment is uh, out-of-pocket investment is what we're being told it is and uh, which is uh, if, you, if, you're, if you're a family of four, uh, you can't go to, well, we should, you shouldn't be eating fast food anyway, but nonetheless, if you took your family to McDonald's and let's just say you got Caesar salad uh, and, uh, you know, bottled water and uh, their fruit cup. Uh, you know, you can't take your family uh, out to McDonald's uh, one time. Uh, uh, it's like $27, I believe, uh, is your investment uh, on a pretty substantial return. It is a global movement, uh, which means it's all around the world. And uh, it's, um, uh, the company is just getting ready to launch on July 18th. So, again, we're still in the process of, of uh, obtaining information. And if we feel that we're ready to announce it next week or the week after, uh, we will do that. We will also probably want to announce it <clears throat> before they announce, which is uh, before they launch, which is in about 10 days. So there's a good possibility that if we decide to share it with you, and it looks like we probably will, uh, provided that a couple bits of information that we're searching, researching right now comes through, we'll announce it next week. So you definitely want to make sure you're on this call because I think you can make some money. Well, I don't think I know you can make some money. So uh, that would be a good thing for, uh, for many of the people that's on this call. So um, thank you all for coming on tonight, and uh, thank you for your, for your support and your questions. And some of you come on here every week, and you know, we really appreciate you. We thank you, and uh, we love you for that and for uh, the brotherhood and sisterhood that this is creating. So uh, before we sign off here, I'd like a moment of silence for the many people who lost their homes today and this week in foreclosure, followed by a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, we, we ask your help and support to hold those people who lost their homes this week and maybe losing their homes in the future, that you, that, you, that you rise them up and you give them strength and understanding and know that everything that's happening is happening for for your good and for your bidding. And we just ask, Father, that you give people strength and hope and wisdom and, and uh, don't let them give up and understand that there, everything is possible through you. Father, I want to thank all the people who come on this call. I want to pray for them. I want to pray for their families. I want to pray for their well-being and their prosperity. I want to pray for all the people that help us with these calls and all the information and the knowledge of, our, of the groups and all the things that are, that are happening here that uh, have your name written all over it. Father, we give you Thanks for um, the people in the past who did this with this group and got this group started. And again, we just we just thank you for everything that that you're doing for for the people and for the nation. And we do know that even though sometimes things look cloudy and they look like they're wrong and all these things that are that are going on, there is there is a there is a real man behind the curtains that's controlling everything. And we give you thanks and and, and we rejoice and have peace in your word. And and we also pray that the people on this call continue to read scripture and, and um, strengthen their, themselves and their family and their hope and their well-being. And together in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Have a great evening. Have a great week. And uh, we'll, we'll be on there at 8 o'clock next weekend. Thanks, Dave. Next, next Wednesday night. The person you have called is unavailable.